Hello, everyone. This is Renee Rentmeister. I'm the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking TV show and podcast. And today we have Erica Kress. And Erica loves to cook. And she's going to share her um, secrets and um, her, you know, her story, her blindness journey and all the other fun things in between. So welcome, Erica. Good morning, Renee. Thanks for having me. Well, I, our pleasure, our pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, to begin with, you're, what, where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm in North Texas, but I say I'm just an all over Texas girl. I was born in Houston, uh, lived there a while, raised in San Antonio area a while, and I've been in the Metroplex um, for about 20, or Dallas, Fort Worth Metroplex for about 20 years now. Wow. So if, if any of us need to, to go to Dallas, we know who to call to take us around, right? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tell us a little bit, Erica. Um, are you um, totally blind? Are you visually impaired? Um, tell I'm, us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm low vision or visually impaired or legally blind. All the all the all those fun, words, right? All the words, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and my condition started um, just a few months after graduating um, from college. I had a bachelor's. I have a bachelor's degree in art and art history, and I all of a sudden got an eye ulcer, which led to cornea damage. Which you know there was a random eye infection. Um, so yeah, I have cornea damage. I also didn't know I had an underlying health condition of diabetes. So that wasn't letting my eyes heal like they should have. And yeah, um, I've been legally blind about 20 years of my life now. And I'm, um, that's half my life because I just turned 41. So, oh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, well, you know what, when it started happening to you, um, what what did you think as you were very young and you, your whole life was ahead of you? For what were sure. some of your thoughts? I mean, it was definitely a shock. It was definitely like, oh, what am I going to do now? Like I said, my, my degree was art and art history <laughs> oh, and I wow. minored in Spanish and I thought, oh my gosh, it's such a visual field. And I was not the person that everyone said, oh, you must have gone to school to be a teacher. And I said, no, I did not. No. I, I like party, plan, uh, party planning and events and nonprofit. And I could really see myself, you know, maybe working for a local art gallery or museum here in Dallas or Fort Worth and, you know, having their events and, and things like that. And I'm like, well, now I can't. I can't really do that. And I was actually my first job right after college was um, a personal assistant for a wedding coordinator, event planner, and she also did the catering. So I really got to see that side of things. So that was, that was interesting. And yeah, I thought that's what I was going to do. And um, I guess, you know, the powers that be had other plans. I did <laughs> figure out for a little while, I really focused on my health, um, you know, learning about diabetes and everything. And I did do a short little stint as a personal trainer at a gym. And Ooh. then, yeah. And then I also thought about, well, how do blind children learn? Like, right. Because I yeah. can see, I've seen for 22 years of my life, but now I, I can't see as well. But how do you explain blue to a child that's never seen the sky, you know? And, oh, yeah. and so I did um, do some alternative certification um, through the state of Texas. And I, um, yeah, I was a teacher's aide for special ed children and at the elementary school setting. And yeah, I got to work with some kids and, and I, gosh, kids are amazing. <laughs> I know. Aren't they fun? Do they? <laughs> they are. Okay. So who's, who says like some of the stranger things, adult children <laughs> regarding vision? Oh, well, the, the I'll say not necessarily strange. I love that kids don't complain because it is just th that's their reality, right? Right. <laughs> um. So, I, like, I volunteer um at Texas Blind Soccer, which is an organization for um. Well, obviously, we play blind soccer, and there's a youth league and there's an adult league, and I volunteer with the kids, and they just fill my. I always say they just make my heart happy. They fill my bucket with joy. They 
you know, oh. I get to talk to them and some of them are like me, visually impaired. And so uh, we get to talk about, you know, different things that we see or don't see, or I, I think they're all cane masters way more than me and braille masters way more than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, they embrace it because they've probably never known anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How Definitely. Did how did that affect you psychologically when you started losing your sight? Did you keep trying to be like act sighted or did you try to learn all the things um, for visual impairment? No, I think I kind of hid my cane. I had told a friend recently, I, I hid a cane, I hid my cane in my closet and it was like in the back of my coat closet or no one would ever see it. And I that doesn't only, help. <laughs> yeah, I only took it out for orientation and mobility training or when I had to go to like a state training or something. But I I was definitely had the white cane shame and not anymore. <laughs> Last oh, year when I good. turned. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely used it when I worked at an elementary school just to remind the kids like, hey, give me some space, you know. <laughs> well, I may not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may not see you down there. Um, and then, you know, last year when I turned 40, I had my, my husband take a photo of me in a, my cute outfit, of course, with my <laughs> white cane. And I just post on my social media that, yeah, this is my white cane. And it's just another awesome accessory. You know, I'm, I'm a, I like to think I'm a cute glam girl and I like to accessorize. And so my <laughs> white cane is just another awesome accessory that, you know, is going to come with me and be part of my outfit for the day. And yeah, check me out. So I, I don't have the white cane shame anymore. <laughs> well, you know, it, you make a, a good point because it is how we look at things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's, it's, it's um, and I think when we're accepting of something of ourselves, I think other people are also more accepting of it. Is, have you? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I know that my white cane is, you know, helps me be more independent, you know, and of course I have friends and my husband and my family members that will always be willing to help me. But you know, like I tell my husband, oh, what if we are on a road trip and I need to run into the ladies room? You can't help me in there. You know, I need to use my <laughs> white cane. <laughs> my guide husband. <laughs> yes, my seeing eye husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what are some of the things, what are some of the experiences you've had um, since losing some of your vision? And what exactly do you see when when you see, when you look? Yeah, if anyone wears glasses, because I used to be a person that wore glasses, um, and then later, you know, as a teen contacts, it's almost like you, you look over at your alarm clock and you have to squint to see it. That's kind of me, but I have to squint and put it up to my face, or like I can see the numbers on my microwave, but I had to kind of it's it's um it's up mounted above my stove so I have to you know lean up on my tippy toes and I can get close <laughs> to the microwave to see the numbers which <laughs> please don't do that at, please don't try that you know and don't try that at home <laughs> don't try that at home um so I can see you know some of the large digital numbers but or like I, I will say if you hand me the newspaper and it says the Dallas morning news I could point on the page where the the letters are and I could say oh here's a photo right but it's also paper is also really horrible grayscale and that's horrible Ooh, contrast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can point on the page where there's photos and I can sit in a doctor's office and flip through the magazine and pretend I'm looking at the photos <laughs> but <laughs> just Un enjoying the colors impaired, right? <laughs> exactly I'm just looking at the colors honestly and <laughs> I'll ask my husband, what is this? And he's like, you're holding it upside down. So <laughs> it, it reminds me of when I, I see a car going down the street and I think it's my friend and like maybe uh -huh. my friend has a certain kind of car, you know, it's a blue car. And so I just see mm -hmm. a blue car and wave and it may not be my friend. It may not be exactly. Yeah. You know, we did take a road trip right, you know, before the Thanksgiving holiday and and it, you know, just, it was overcast. So I was seeing better. And I, you know, I turned to my husband, I'm like, oh, look at that, you know, bright orange 18 wheeler beside us. And he's like, oh, you're seeing well today. And yeah, <laughs> so there's some days that I, you know, um, generally, you know, can see a little better than others. Um, 
Yeah, but I still cook and I still garden. I can still see my dogs. You know, sometimes I'll take a photo of my dogs and then zoom in um, because it's hard to get close to a dog without getting puppy kisses. I know. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm kind of in both worlds and I have, a, you know, a big space in my heart for people that are, that are in both worlds in the sighted and not sighted world, but I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What, what is like, do you have like a story of someone um, who, who just, they, something unusual, something that they said to you, or they, they just assume something um, mm -hmm. because of your vision. Do you have any stories like that? Yeah. Um, a few, I'm sure my, I know often at the store, you know, even if I'm walking independently with my white cane, you know, and my husband and I aren't necessarily holding hands or walking side by side, uh, people will, you know, I'll ask a question, you know, at the makeup counter and then they'll respond to my husband and he's oh. like, I'm just going to walk oh away. <laughs> That's an oldie, then, but a goodie. It, it, it is. It's like, uh, you're, I'm talking talk to, yeah. to me, you know, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, um, I was lucky as a teen, I'll say a late teen, early twenties. One of my jobs, um, at college was working at freshman orientation and they did a great training with us. And they said, you know, if you see somebody with, you know, a translator, you don't talk to the translator, you talk to the student and let the translator translate for them. And, and I was thinking that, yeah, like, you know, and there, there was times that we had someone who was um, doing, you know, same language translating or a different language translating, or you, know, you keep speaking to your student because that's your, that's your customer. <laughs> right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I, that's um something I've never really heard before, but it it makes so much sense. I, I've taken people to the store and like the person who is blind has a question and, mm -hmm. and the person, uh, you know, the clerk or whatever um, talks to me, gives me the answer. It's like, no, she, yeah. she is not deaf. <laughs> she can hear you. <laughs> yes. She's yes. asking the question. They always look yes. like sort of funny. <laughs> Or at the restaurant, is she ready to order? And my husband's like, yeah, she'll, she'll tell you what she's hungry for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I know you love to cook. So um, tell us a little bit about your cooking experiences and then share your recipe, which sounds totally amazing. Great. Yeah, I do. I, I'll say I don't. I probably like eating more than I love cooking. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah and I I am kind of like the semi-homemade kind of person I like things you know I don't mind using a cake mix from the box or you know something that's already started and then adding something to it to kind of just add a little touch um sure. and yeah my mom was always a busy um she was a house a housewife but she was also um a teacher's aide at, at an elementary school so maybe you could say I, I followed in her footsteps so yeah so um you know a lot of ready meals or quick meals you know and under half an hour meals and a lot of use of the microwave <laughs> I know that was the <laughs> debate when my husband and I moved in together <laughs> I'm like this can go in the microwave we don't need to dirty up pots and pans for this you know this this will be done in minutes um <laughs> so I am a quick cook I do like recipes where I'm using the one pot instead of dirtying everything up in the kitchen but um yeah I thought I'd talk about oreo balls um today which other people call oreo truffles and it's really cool because it can be a variety and if you hear my little dogs running around in the background <laughs> That's, that's, that's okay. I actually didn't, but that's okay. That's cool. That's yeah. Life, right. It's life. I am a dog mom. Yeah. And they are, they stay out of the kitchen while mommy's cooking, but they are really good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so the Oreo balls just, they're pretty easy. Um, I think you're going to post the recipe to get all the specifics down, but generally it just takes three ingredients, which is, uh, about 36 Oreo, you know, sandwich cookies, one block of cream cheese, 
and some almond bark, which I prefer to use, but people, I know there's other melting chocolate that people prefer, but whatever, whatever is your go-to for melting and, you know, doing like the hard shell, um, sure. do that. And so, yeah, basically, and it's kind of fun to do if you have kids or you need to get some aggression out because you, because you get to crush the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but first you have to eat three or four, right? Of course. Yes. That's why I think the package probably comes with them out, maybe about 40, but you get to eat a few of those because just, <laughs> we need only about 36 for the recipe and you can toss them in a Ziploc bag, a gallon size bag. And if, you know, if you want to do maybe a dozen at a time or half of them at a time, and then you get to crush them with either, you know, a coffee mug or a um, rolling pin, but yeah, once you get them crushed pretty well, um, toss them in a bowl. You're going to mix in that, uh, room temperature cream cheese and start forming about 40, uh, about bite-sized balls, one inch balls. Um, you know, if you want to get fancy or something, or if you, you feel very indulgent and you want to make them the size of a golf ball, that's fine. Oh <laughs> I think that's a little big. <laughs> um, They'll just get stuck in your mouth. <laughs> they're just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you're going to let those refrigerate uh, for about 10 minutes. And you probably want to use a a sheet of parchment paper on a cookie sheet. And then while that's chilling for 10 minutes, you want to go ahead and start melting down your almond bark. And I know some people use the microwave and some people use like a double broiler. So it's whatever you feel safest or convenient using. Um, I like the stovetop method and yeah, I'll go and um, get those chilled Oreo balls out of the fridge and just roll them in the almond bark and then place them back on the parchment paper and um yeah let them chill for about an hour and they're just ready to enjoy well that that sounds so easy and so amazing and they look very elegant and for the holidays you can even maybe put some sort of cute little decoration on it with frost yeah exactly and you can even i know oreo has a lot of um different on a say varieties right like the mints or the peanut butter yes. so I know you can switch it up and you know or some people have done even the birthday cake Oreos and you know did the white chocolate instead of the chocolate chocolate so wow you definitely mix it up and it Oreos. does make a great gift I know and you know Oreos have come a long way from when I was growing up they only had the um the chocolate cookies with the white uh -huh. there that was it and now uh -huh. they've got every kind under the sun they do they really do so so many varieties um you know so even if you buy the generic brand it still works <laughs> for this <laughs> recipe because i mean it's going to be dipped in chocolate how could it be bad <laughs> yeah right anything dipped in chocolate is got to be good <laughs> yeah yeah and i know um this last time i i hadn't noticed there was enough almond bark so some of mine you know i could still see the white cream cheese and oreo cream and so I had to go through and roll them back through some more almond bark. So that's, that's a tip. I'd say if you notice that you're, you know, if I'm like, why are they so squishy? Why are they not like crunchy when I bite in, you know, you can bite into that chocolate. Um, yeah, it's because I hadn't dipped them well enough into the almond bark. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a enough chocolate covering <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah and um yeah I know for me some people use a fork or um you know a toothpick to stab it and dip it in and you can do that <laughs> but I I use my hands I use clean hands always and <laughs> and that's you know I need to feel to see what I'm doing so Exactly. Do you do you freeze um, them at all before you coat them? Or do you chill them at all? Before you yes, them? you can chill them for about 10 minutes on the parchment paper. And that's the perfect time for you to be melting down, you know, a slow melt on that almond bark. Oh, yeah, because I was thinking like even with a cake to frost a cake, I've learned to put it in the freezer and let it chill for a while. And then 
you know, you don't have the cake ripping off on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want your Oreo balls to keep their shape. And I know, you, you know, for me, if I'm working with my hands, I might warm them up too much, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, those those sound amazing. Are you making them for the holidays? Yeah, yeah. You you cut out. You said, am I doing those for the holidays? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've already made one batch and I shared with my friends that I get to see once a month. So they were excited and I heard there was um, arguing on car rides home. <laughs> <laughs> Who got what? But, oh my um, God. And even my husband said, did you give them all away? I said, yes, we have some at the house. And he's like, oh, but I'm hungry right now for them. <laughs> Gosh, you had some last night and there's more at the house. So calm down. and. <laughs> It's only November. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. And do you, um, that would make a great gift. The, yes. Yes. A funny story when I worked at the elementary school and it was, we'd have, you know, bake sales and bring this and that for a fundraiser. I think a batch of these Oreo balls went for like $60. <laughs> Wow, that's that's amazing. Well, you know, you could always like, you know, you could sell them, and and it'd be fun at like church picnics or whatever, you know, with the yeah. cars that they have. Well, um, Erica, do you have any recommendations for someone uh, who is going blind, who is losing their sight, or they they're just frustrated with with losing their sight? What what kind of things do you have to tell them? Of course. Yeah. There's always going to be the days I know, you know, like people say, Oh, your social media is where you're shiny and you're happy. And, and that's me. I am generally an overall positive person, but trust me, there are the days that just stink. Right. <laughs> right. Like, like <laughs> all of us, but in a different way. Yeah, exactly. There are all the days that are, you know, we'll just say crappy. <laughs> <laughs> The technical term. The technical term. Yeah, there are always bad days. And those are the days it's really good to have, you know, a support system. There's a lot, you know, wherever you're at, besides just state agency, there's the National Federation of the Blind, American Council of the Blind. And uh, just locally, there's there's a lot of different you know, organizations. Um, my best friend actually started her own nonprofit called Living Beyond Limits. And, and we really do. Um, she's traveled all the way, you know, as a visually impaired person to, you know, Hawaii. And um, she went to Las Vegas independently. She went to like New York City independently. And, <laughs> and yeah. Um, and yeah, we share about it on our social media, because it's kind of a reminder, you know, we are in a visual world. Um, and so we're kind of just reminding the sighted, like, hey, us blind people are doing cool things too. <laughs> right, right. This isn't 1950 where, you know, you just get left into a dark room and, and life goes on around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody's like jumping in and, and doing things and traveling yeah. and having fun and mm -hmm. having parties. And so it's amazing. So what, what is your advice? What would you tell someone? Yeah, I would say definitely have a support system, right? You know, have, have those friends or family, or church or wherever you need to reach out to, because there are going to be some days that, that stink. And then there's going to be <laughs> the good days too. And, you know, don't be shy, be an advocate for yourself. Um, I know where I live, my biggest problem is transportation. There's limited public transportation. And so I have to advocate for myself and ask, you know, can somebody help me get there? Or, you know, is it accessible, you know, via this way or that way? Right. So yeah, definitely be an advocate for yourself and getting out to know your other, there are other blind people, um, possibly even in your neighborhood. Cause I met some people that live like five miles away from me. And I'm like, Oh, blind people. Hey, I didn't know you were <laughs> <Yay>. here. <laughs> Well, you yeah. know, and sometimes people don't even like 
you don't realize they're blind or have a visual impairment or anything. They don't really talk about it. Mm-hmm. And, and and then, you know, when you reach out to them, they, they come up. Oops, I think I lost you there, Renee. No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Oh, great, great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You said, um, yeah, we don't realize they're visually impaired. Right, right. Because sometimes mm-hmm. people aren't really, you know, real open about it. And then when you, once you start talking about you, then they feel more comfortable talking about their um, their sight. Yeah, for sure. And I know that's one thing, you know, people, you know, I'll say my extended friends and family on Facebook will say, you know, they might, I'm in Texas, they might live in Missouri or Kansas or somewhere. And they're like, Hey, I met a lady, she's blind. Can I give her your, your information? I'm like, yes, you know, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I may not know all the resources in her area, you know, that person's area, but you know, let me just be someone they can just a starting point to talk to. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Erica, tell us how people can reach out to you and um, tell us again the name of your social media platform. Yeah, I'm on Facebook and it's um, it's my full name because my maiden name, uh, Erica Sanchez Cress and Cress is K-R-E-S-S. And then I'm also on Instagram as blinding underscore beauty underscore VIP. And you could say it's for very important people or visually impaired person. Right, <laughs> right. Blinding <laughs> beauty VIP. Yeah. And I, I'm i sure, um, you know, when you post this, you'll tag me in and people can find me that way too. Sure, most definitely. And um, again, thank you so much, Erica. We've really enjoyed speaking with you today. Um, again, this has been Erica sanchez Kress. And I'm Renee Rentmeister, the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking show, a TV show and podcast. If you want to reach out to us, we are on uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Cooking Without Looking TV show. Um, we're also, we have a website. It's www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. If that's a little long to remember, just go and go Google us, a Cooking Without Looking TV show. And again, Erica, uh, thank you for helping us change the way we see blindness. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful holiday. Thank you. You too. Thanks again. Of course.